Good morning. Welcome to those of you who are here in Fishburne Theater. Um, seniors, thank you for being here. And those of you who are Zooming in from classrooms in Willis Hall. So as always, a reminder, close your computers and other devices, and especially even in Fishburne, and especially in Fishburne, silence your cell phones and put them away so that you can give your undivided attention to today's presenter. And now to introduce our presenter is Remy Lusk. I've known Diana since we started North Cross together in the fourth grade. And as we have grown and learned together, she has remained just as headstrong, confident, and remarkable as she was when we met at nine years old. Her research presented today on the importance of diversity is just a fraction of what is viewed as an inspiration to those around her. And I'm proud to introduce my longtime friend and peer, Diana Anderson Price. I started school at North Cross in the fourth grade when I moved to Roanoke. Before this, I had only attended a gifted public school in Florida where I had children of all ethnicities around me and the public county school, Green Valley, where the majority of children were white. I was relatively fortunate with the amount of African-American students in my grade at North Cross. There were three other African-American girls and one African-American boy. As we moved to Eaton Hall with more individualized class schedules, I began to see fewer people who looked like me. In my classes, I was often the only black person present. Race became more apparent to me during history classes where we talked about slavery, when my hairstyles became a larger topic of conversation, and when I was expected to speak on behalf of the entire African-American community where my white friends had questions. This continued into high school when two more African-American students joined my grade, yet I still found myself in a room where no one looked like me. It became discouraging to spend eight hours a day in a place where my skin color did not feel appreciated. Without seeing people of color in a position of power, it became increasingly hard to imagine a future for myself in a similar position. The demographics at North Cross show a relatively average amount of diversity for a private school. 69.9% of the population is white, while 9.1 is Asian, 7.1 is African American, 6.1 is multicultural, 1.2 is Hispanic and 0.2% is Pacific Islander. International students account for 3.7% of our population and race is not indicated for 2.8% of students. Although the percentage of each ethnicity is relatively low, it is important to address that the population of North Cross is divided into three main divisions, lower, middle, and upper school, with separate classes and grade levels in each. With the population of the entire school at approximately 500, the percentages of these demographics can be easily converted into raw numerical figures. 350 white students, 45 Asian students, 35 African-American students, 30 multicultural students, 18 international students, 14 students of unknown race, six Hispanic students, and one Pacific, Pacific Islander student. These numbers and statistics are often used to show the positive progress of the demographics on campus. However, the majority of North Cross's minorities are international students with a homogenous background. This school year has brought a wide range of international students from a plethora of locations, but with a plurality of Asian students. North Cross has a boarding school program with 19 students, the majority of whom are from Vietnam with six students and Germany also with six students. Vietnam has a homogenous culture. A, a homogenous culture is generally one where a large percentage of citizens will follow the same religious practice, belong to the same ethnicity, speak the same language, hold the same values, have a common background and hold a strong sense of national pride. Germany is traditionally known as a homogenous society, but with the help of education and immigration, it is slowly transitioning into a heterogeneous society. A heterogeneous population is one without the strong and consistent values categorized with homogenous cultures. This type of society is made up of differences in culture, ethnicity, religion, and language. The United States is known for its large heterogeneous or mixing pot culture due to immigration. On our campus, the increase in international students and in the Global Studies Scholar Program 
introduces the Willis Hall community to other international cultures. While we celebrate these international cultures and communities, we often miss the opportunity for a more local focus on diverse backgrounds and cultures. As important as it is to open the North Cross community's mind to international affairs, it is vital to not close ourselves off to the cultures and ethnicities in the, in the immediate community. Just as companies and corporations have recognized the importance of diversity and the benefits it presents, the education system has reason to establish racial diversity as well. Though opponents of racial diversity have pointed out negative effects, such as causing more conflict, concern about being unintentionally disrespectful, lower communication rates, trust, and cohesion. These claims should not be used as a diversion to discourage a more diverse space, as research shows that there are many positive effects. In the education system, African American students who are in racially balanced classrooms feel safer and less alone than before. During a study with undergraduate students at Illinois University, the students were placed into groups of three, where the goal was to solve a murder mystery. The groups of three were composed of different numbers of white and non-white members. The groups that had both races outperformed the all-white groups tremendously. Dr. Catherine W. Phillips, professor of leadership and ethics management at Columbia Business School, ran the study and ended her conclusion with, quote, being with similar others leads us to think we all hold the same information and share the same perspective. This perspective, which stopped the all-white groups from effectively process processing the information is what hinders creativity and innovation, end quote. The presence of diversity in the greater community is a large factor in the demographics of schools in the Roanoke County area, such as North Cross School. The Roanoke County area has five public high schools, all with varying demographics, including Hidden Valley High School. Hidden Valley has a student population of 882 with, re with relatively similar percentages to ours, yet due to the higher population, the number of minority students is also higher. 79% of the population is white, while 7% is Asian and 5% is African American. These numbers translate into 696 white students, 61 Asian students, and 44 African American students. The greater population's demographics closely resemble Hidden Valley High School and North Cross School. The Roanoke County area contains 86% Caucasian citizens, 6% African American citizens, and 3% Asian citizens. Economics are also an important factor of minority students attending North Cross. The non-adjusted tuition for eighth grade to senior year is $20,700 per year without taking into account lunch, textbooks, transportation, or any additional fees. According to the Virginia census records, the median annual household income in the Roanoke County area is $71,715, while around 48% of the Roanoke County population makes less than the median amount. With an average household income of $143,430, assuming that it is, that it is a three-person household with both adults receiving the median income, it would not be a large financial burden for said family to send their one child to North Cross. In an alternative situation with a one income household that receives the median annual income per year with two children in Willis Hall, the family would have $30,315 left per year. Affording North Cross in this scenario is almost impossible without the help of tailored tuition assistance. With the large financial burden that comes along with attending North Cross, it is hard to attract more diversity to, camp to the campus. According to the national census, African-American households receive the lowest medium outcome of $40,258 per year, while white households received $68,145 per year. The students at local public high schools may academically fit into the mission statement, which states, quote, we explicitly recognize the importance of intellectual and academic achievement, end quote. It is vital to not admit students solely due to their skin tone as it would compromise the academic integrity and rigor of the curriculum, but to admit considering the academic standards that North Cross prides itself on. Hidden Valley High School uses state testing scores in order to determine students' proficiency in subjects. 
However, due to the fact that North Cross does not participate in state testing, self-reported college admissions are what will be used to compare the academic prowess of both institutions. At both schools, the three most popular universities students seek to attend are Virginia Tech, University of Virginia, and James Madison University. There have been 53 North Cross alumni to attend UVA, 43 to attend Tech, and 31 to attend JMU. Meanwhile, there have been 250 North Cross alumni to attend Tech, 206 to attend UVA, and 192 to attend JMU. Although the number of Hidden Valley alumni to attend these universities seems overwhelming in comparison to the number of North Cross alumni, it is important to note that the population size of Hidden Valley High School is more than the entire campus population at North Cross. Due to this, I've created an altered population size for the admissions of Hidden Valley High School. These numbers show that Hidden Valley is somewhat on par with the admissions numbers at North Cross, even if the curriculum at North Cross is more challenging. The rise of independent schools, particularly in the South, has not been exclusively about the desire for higher academic standards. In fact, many independent schools in Southern states have been termed white flight schools in reference to the sharp 43% increase in, the, in their enrollment beginning in the 1940s. White flight refers to when whites move out of places that they had previously occupied because minorities began moving in. The newfound hope to maintain an all white or exclusive school came after the Supreme Court ruled on cases in Maryland and Missouri, outlawing segregation in graduate institutions. The Southern Education Foundation, SEF, acknowledged the fear that this incited in the South. Quote, it signaled to watchful Southern leaders that desegregation might soon spread to their public elementary and secondary schools, compelling them to react in ways to defend their way of life, end quote. This began the initiative to either enroll white students into existing private schools or to create them. North Cross was founded in 1944 by Ms. May Butts and Billy North Cross. As many of you know from our annual Founders Day celebration, Ms. Butts began her own school when her daughter did not meet the age cutoff for enrollment in public school. May's desire to educate her daughter was the impetus for the founding of the school, but the later growth of the school corresponds with greater historical significance. In order to properly show the correlation between the founding of North Cross and white flight in education, it is imperative to go in depth with both the history of our school and the history of private schools across the nation. North Cross began in 1944 with 19 first grade students enrolled, then after a year moved from Butts basement to a house in order to add a kindergarten and second grade class. The school proceeded to grow in size and numbers, including a third grade class in 1946, an auditorium and cafeteria in 1947, and incorporated for the second time in 1957. The 60s also treated North Cross well as it was merged to create an even larger campus and student population until finally in 1961, there were 800 there were 181 students attending the newly introduced school, which continues to grow into the North Cross of today. The timeline of the increase of students directly correlates to the larger history of private school growth in the South, as the SEF states that from, quote, 1950 to 1965, private school enrollment grew at unprecedented rates, end quote. The political conservative nature of Virginia assisted in the rise of independent schools and their beliefs surrounding the importance of segregation. It is vital that the greater history of independent schools is understood as North Cross explores its role and mission moving forward. Moving forward requires the acceptance of our differences, history, and appearances, while also being aware of them. Self-awareness is defined as being aware of your psychological state, so so as you can focus on behaviors, feelings, and traits. Interpersonal awareness is defined as the ability to view and understand the emotions, cultures, and perspectives of others. Interpersonal awareness is an integral part of diversity as self-awareness constricts the ability to truly accept others. Without being exposed to cultures or ethnicities other than your own, it is difficult to perceive them as normal. Yet the North Cross community does it every day by connecting with foreign exchange students. The student body is not afraid to ask questions about international students' culture if we feel that it is non-controversial. However, we avoid questions pertaining to others' racial cultures for fear of offending one another. 
for others to truly have diversity in interpersonal relationships. It is important that we accept our differences while participating in open communication about the differences in history of minority groups. Even setting aside the complicated history of race, there would still be a large divide between races due to the lack of communication. The younger generation has not had an introduction to racism and the stigma behind the different races or skin tone, yet they are shown that race is a shameful thing that should not be discussed. The American Educational Research Journal has found that children are not color innocent and simply see race as a tool to help with identifications, just as others do with the varying identifying features such as hair, body type, height, etc. Without conversations pertaining specifically to race, it can be interpreted as a topic that should be seen and not discussed. Learning is meant to help transform identities and prepare children for the world, yet without teaching that race is something that can be discussed, the formation of incorrect biases is likely to occur. This can also lead to a somewhat problematic future as language is not neutral and due to words carrying a historical meaning, not all words and language can be deemed appropriate. In a qualitative study, which viewed, quote, day-to-day -day experience, experiences with racial and ethnic diversity in an early childhood classroom, end quote, where the children were from ages three to five, researcher Karen C. Park, faculty at the School of Education at Anoc University Seattle with a large focus on early childhood and anti-bias research, use various activities to ask children about race. And during these conversations, children commented on the history of different races and exhibited bias that, is, that the students defended by saying that they had learned this information from their household lives. While it may be difficult to imagine the same issues arise here on campus. While working in the extended day and summer camp program here, I have personally seen many instances of exclusion due to race. One instance was where a group of first grade students were playing a game of house and excluded a minority student from being a part of the family because someone could not be related to them without matching their blonde hair and blue eyes. Another instance was during a conversation about coronavirus and some biased remarks about what race was responsible for the virus, along with derogatory comments about the race that the students later said were true because of the conversations held at home. According to Park, creating bias is a habit that is taught to children and reinforced by lack of communication, yet is unavoidable due to media, family, history, and other outside influences. However, there are two different types of biases that are framed by intention. Bias is defined as prejudice in favor or against one person, group, or thing in comparison with another group, but in, but in an unfair context. Bias is commonly split into two categories, implicit and explicit bias. Explicit bias is directly expressed, the speaker being aware of said explicit bias and consciously acting upon it. Implicit bias is not expressed intentionally. Implicit bias can also be referred to as an unconscious bias as it may contradict a person's, quote, beliefs and values, end quote. An education system that supports the use of communication and complete transparency about different ethnicities is an anti-bias education system. The anti-bias education system's main goal is to create a safe and inclusive environment. The system also recognizes that bias is taught to children, and this is what helps shape their opinions and biases in the future. This is a proactive way to create conversations about race. Educators have asked how this would affect a classroom if it were only filled with students of one ethnicity and question the purpose. However, as researchers Lewis Dermot Sparks and Patricia G. Ramsey, professors of psychology and co-publishers in the National Association for the Education of Young Children noted, without an anti-bias education system, children could have a false sense of racial superiority that is damaging and isolating. This false sense of superiority stems from seeing a majority of one's own race in the classroom. Even if the demographics of a classroom or school is of one culture or ethnicity, it is possible to introduce different cultures and ethnicities with diverse books, posters, skin colored crayons, or the hiring of diverse staff members. This system has four main goals that have been recognized by Sarah McLaughlin, licensed social worker and senior writing for the Parenting Resources Department in Washington, DC. One, the child will have self-awareness and confidence about themselves. Two, the child will have joy and comfort in the presence of diversity and use a correct 
language and speech about race. Three, the child will be able to recognize unfairness, be able to address it and see that unfairness hurts. And four, the child will be able to demonstrate empowerment and be able to address prejudice, end quote. Some ways to start observing the ch children's view of races or diversity can be playing with different colored dolls or making a joke at appearances that differ from their own. It is also to ask, is whiteness the invisible normalcy at the school through the race of teachers or students, posters, books, etc.? Encouraging the conversations about race and prejudices and the difference, differences are important, while also keeping in mind not to discipline for every prejudice saying to avoid halting the conversations. It is also an integral part of the system to demonstrate other factors that show diversity and our opportunities for inclusivity, such as non-traditional family models and non-binary gender. The main goal of anti-bias education is to encourage empathy, critique prejudice, and create more equal and inclusive alternatives. This school year has brought a large amount of positive change. With the new DEI, Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion Director, Ms. Taylor, we are able to stay proactive instead of reactive. With the addition of this position on campus, the campus has been introduced to more cultures and shown appreciation of them, even if they are not currently present on campus. We have also had the largest number of new students, which increased the ethnically diverse population. Any changes in the education system or the change in demographics can and will not be done in a day or school year. However, this is a part of a more consistent plan to outgrow the stereotypes of a private school into a stronger and more inclusive campus. It would be unrealistic to expect the demographics to shift in a dramatic way, such as reaching 50% minority students. However, it is not reasonable for the demographics to shift due to adding more minority students in a five to 10 year plan. The anti-bias education system corresponds with the goals of North Cross as the mission statements or purposes of both emphasize the importance of empathy and inclusivity. As an independent school, North Cross has the opportunity to elicit change through incorporating some parts of the anti-bias education system while also increasing the amount of diversity on campus through both staff, faculty, and students. These changes will assist North Cross in achieving its goals as stated as as stated in its mission, which is to create, quote, leaders in the local and global communities, end quote. Okay. 